Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking all about my Ficus Alaska Taniki or Tenica, however you decide to pronounce it. I did make an Instagram post the other day and there was a few questions in the comment section asking how I care for this plant and how I keep it looking healthy even through the winter months. So I'm just going to share what I do to care for this plant and hopefully it helps you take care of yours at home. There's Oscar. He's helping me out today. So yeah, let's get into it. One of the most important things for any ficus plant, whether that be the elastica or say like the fiddle leaf fig, the ficus lorata, is the amount of sunlight that it gets. These plants require a lot of sunlight. So if you don't have a bright sunny location, this is probably not the best plant for you. Right now I have mine probably about three or four feet back from a south facing window and you can see it is getting some direct sunlight. Right now it is uh, mid-December. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon so the sun is lower in the sky and obviously the intensity is a lot less through the winter months than it would be in uh, the summer so this direct sunlight throughout the kind of later afternoon is not going to harm this plant it does really well or responds really well obviously there's a bunch of new growth so you have to have this in a bright sunny location and even some direct sunlight is good for this plant just as long as you acclimate it to that location so if you do have it kind of in a shadier spot say I don't know like a little bit further back where it's not getting any direct sunlight just slowly bring it into more sunlight and that way you shouldn't get any leaf burn I know everything that you read says bright indirect light but these like uh, my Melanie and my Robusta here they've all been getting some direct sunlight with uh, no leaf burn or anything like that they've done really well in this location so sunlight is extremely important look at the way the sun reflects off the Melanie that is super cool just going to show you on this light meter that I bought off Amazon a little while ago. I really like using this to determine, I guess, the placement of my plants and just the amount of light that it's getting. So for a general rule, I use foot candles. I don't know if you can see it there. It's not focusing. Uh, foot candles is the light measurement that I use. Low light plants are between 50 and 250. Medium light is between 250 and kind of that 500, maybe 750. And anything above 500 to that thousand or more is considered highlight. So you can see as we're going, the light sensor is slowly hitting the sunlight. So even right here, like probably six, seven feet back from the south facing window, it is already in kind of that highlight um, ranges. So obviously the closer that you bring it to the light source, the higher foot candles you're gonna be getting. So this right now is around 1500. It's a little overcast today, but the sun is definitely uh, shining bright and it's getting a ton of light. So right there, 16, between 14 and 1600 foot candles. If you are interested in uh, a light meter like this, I do have an Amazon Canada in US store with this exact product on it. You can go check it out. I have the links down in the description for both Canada and US. You can go check out uh, some of the plant accessories and soils and that sort of thing that I have listed down there if you wanna go check it out. I just realized you can probably hear me stomping around in the video because I got my dad's slippers on today. But next thing I'm going to talk about is watering. And I think soil and watering kind of go hand in hand. So I'll probably talk about uh, both at the same time as they're both equally important. Look at these. I should take these uh, slippers off. But okay, so this plant is extremely dry right now. And I just want to show you the soil consistency that I have in the pot. I have a ton of perlite. So this is a tropical plant mix. I'll show you the bag here in a second. And um, I use a lot of perlite because these like to be uh, thoroughly watered, but they don't like to sit in the wet, soggy soil for very long, especially if you have it in a larger pot. The amount of soil that you use, like if you have a large plant like this, um, it does tend to retain moisture in these larger pots. Say if it was in a smaller pot, like uh, I have uh, this ficus in, it doesn't hold on to moisture very long. Usually the plant uh, utilizes that water fairly quick, but if you have a large pot, the, uh, the soil tends to stay a little bit more wet than if it was in a smaller pot, if that makes sense. So just be careful with the type of soil that you use. Make sure it is a well-draining mix. You could even probably get away with like a cactus and succulent mix. It just allows for that uh, well-draining soil and it doesn't stay wet or soggy too long. It, uh, it basically dries out a little bit quicker and that's what these plants like. This is the soil that I use. I really like this ProMix brand. It is a premium tropical plant mix and I use Dutch Treat Perlite. They have some kind of chunkier perlite in there. So it just obviously allows for good drainage. I probably use like a 60% soil, 40% perlite 
consistency and the uh, the plants seem to really like it. It just allows for that uh, good drainage, um, but it doesn't hold on to moisture for too long, which these are pretty susceptible to root rot if you do overwater it or you're using the, I guess, improper soil. I'm gonna bring this over to the uh, watering tray here in a second, but whenever I water these larger plants, I always like to bring them um, either outside in the summer or in the bathtub, uh, bathroom in the winter. And I like to spray off the leaves because these are quite susceptible to spider mites. I just want to quickly talk about that. So um, I like to spray them off um, either with the hose or the shower uh, attachment or uh, one of those spray bottles. I don't even know where it is, but um, yeah, I just like to spray it down and then give it a good thorough watering. I'm not gonna do that today like I typically would. I did notice some spider mites on actually my little uh, tanniki back there as well as my uh, burgundy over there. I'll show you some damage here in a second, but the reason why I'm not taking it uh, to spray off today is I'm trialing these little packs of beneficial bugs that I've been just hanging on the trees. They're supposed to get rid of like spider mites, uh, thrips, um, any type of insect that are on these trees and my house plants. So I got these little packs all over. So I don't want to spray it off because you'll be spraying off the good and bad insects. So I'm just going to kind of leave it for now and see how my uh, plants respond to these uh, beneficial insects or these predatory mites. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna give it some water tea. I'm not gonna spray it off. Just gonna show you on this leaf here. This is my Ficus elastica burgundy. You can see all these kind of like little white spots on the back side of the leaf. Um, it just looks like a, like a water buildup, but this is actually spider mite damage. The reason why it looks like that is spider mites will actually suck the sap out of the leaf. So that's what you will see on the back side. It looks very subtle, but the leaf itself feels very flimsy. Um, just not healthy. So that's kind of what alerted me to it this morning. And plus I did find a little bit of webbing on leaves here. So I already did spray this one down actually. And uh, so yeah, I just wanted to quickly show that's what you should be, I guess, looking for. Or if you see something like this, obviously treat the plant, separate it from the rest of your plants and uh, spray it down or use like an insecticidal soap or something like that. Okay, I gotta bring this big beast over now. Give it some water. I do use filter tap water for my house plants. This is a faucet attachment. It basically just screws on to your uh, drinking water faucet. It's got a little toggle here, so you can switch between like drinking water and filtered water. Just trying to water my plants over there, and this this little guy was snoring. Hey, <laughs> you're so tired. I'm sorry. You're just trying to have a little nap, aren't you? Hey. Don't think I even showed it yet, but this plant is still pushing out a ton of new growth. Here's a new leaf. Here's one up here that is just starting to unfurl. So because it is still actively growing, it's pushing out new leaves. I will be fertilizing today uh, with the Dynagrow Foliage Pro. This is what I use for most of my house plants. And uh, always follow the recommended dosage on the back. Because it is in the winter months, I will always cut the recommended dose in half. So that's what I did uh, with this here. I already filled up the watering can. This is a liquid fertilizer, so just mix the two together. I will be, oh, there's my dishes again. Um, <laughs> I will be watering with just straight water first and the reason why you want to do that is it will probably uh, take this entire jug to saturate the soil for this uh, size of a plant and um, if you just use the water and fertilizer you will be using a lot more fertilizer. I don't know if that makes sense so I'll probably have to use a whole can uh, for it to be completely saturated but if I water with um, just straight water first that kind of pre-soaks the soil and then I can add a little bit of fertilizer like maybe half a can and then that way between the two it should soak the soil. You're just you're using more product if you just water with uh, fertilizer and water so that's why I will water with the uh, oh my goodness straight water first. That's so confusing. Sorry. There's this piece of string back here that's driving me nuts. I'm just gonna cut this off quick. There you go. Okay so now I'm going to use the water. I apologize. I hope that made sense but that was kind of a really long confusing ramble there. Okay, so I'm just going to maybe use half a can. I'm just gonna let that soak through. Oh, it already. So yeah, you can see it, it soaks down really fast. And that's what you want uh, to achieve when using, oh, there's Zoe, or there's pickles. So yeah, you just want it to uh, completely <laughs> distracted by the dogs. So yeah, you want it to soak down quick like that. 
And now I'm going to add some fertilizer. I will also cut back the amount of water that I give throughout the winter months. Right now it is actively growing, so it will be utilizing this uh, moisture in the soil pretty fast. And I will let this dry out completely, like it is bone dry today. And I usually just pay attention to the leaves. If they start to feel a little bit soft or even like a little bit droopy, then you've probably gone a little bit too far in regards to letting it get dry, but just make sure that you let it get uh, completely dry. Just feel the weight of the pot. Like I, I can already feel this is heavier. This plant tolerates regular house humidity and I'll show you mine over here. It's actually pretty low right now. It's only 34% uh, humidity and the temperature inside is 20 degrees Celsius. So that is pretty typical of this part, like this part of Canada. I'm in the Canadian prairies. We get really cold, dry uh, weather throughout the winter months. See, there's snow out there. It's like minus 22 or 20 today. So it's uh, really cold outside. And that's actually another thing that I want to talk about. Uh, a lot of people will say that this plant does not tolerate any drafts or anything like that. This plant has been here beside this door for the last two years and I am constantly having to let the dogs outside so you can, oh, here she comes now. You wanna go outside? Um, yeah, it's, you know, a couple inches from this door and I, we don't keep it open long, but it is getting cold drafts. It's minus 20, whoops, lost my slipper. It's minus 20 degrees outside. And there's pickles again. Oh, she's mad because I didn't throw her ball. Um, but yeah, it is minus 20 degrees outside, right beside the door, doesn't matter. It's probably acclimated to this spot, but uh, just so you see, these Ficus Alaska, not too fussy or finicky for me. If I put a fiddle leaf fig here, it would have died probably within days. So just, uh, I don't know, just to show you, mine does well near a drafty cold location, but it might be different for you, might be different for your plant. Just make sure you acclimate it to your, uh, your spot or your location. Did you wake up from your nap, eh? Did you have a good nap? Good boy. You gonna go outside with pickles? Okay, let's go. You gonna come out? Okay, you can go too. It's fine. Look what I found the other day, the OG pencil. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about propagation. Uh, these plants are super easy to propagate. Basically you wanna, I'm not gonna do it right uh, today because I don't wanna chop this plant up, but um, you wanna get a portion lower in the stem where it allows for like four, three, four, five, six leaves kind of thing. And then uh, there'll be these little leaf lines or leaf nodes they're called, cut in between there and you can literally stick it in a glass of water. Um, such as this. This is my Ficus Elastica Melanie. Uh, this has been rooting in water for a few months now. And I just wanna show you on this one. When you make a cut, this is where I made the cut. Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not. Let's just turn around here. Ooh, there's some spider webs there. That's not good, I gotta spray that down. But I have the beneficial bugs, but anyways. Um, this is where I made the cut and you can see it did get two branches. So right here is where I made the cut. This branch spread it out and this one spread it out. I did prune in the winter months here. I cut the tops off, you can see right there, and it only sprouted uh, one branch. And the reason why I think that happened is this one I did in the spring and summer. It uh, had enough energy that the plant produced two branches, whereas uh, this one in the winter months here, it only had enough energy for the one branch. So in the spring, I might cut it back one more node so that it might uh, branch out in two, three, or even more uh, locations along that stem. You just uh, cut the top off and stick it in a container of water. And you do get roots at the very bottom where you made the cut. So this is definitely ready for some soil. So I got three leaves on this one. If you have a leaf that is submerged in water, um, I would cut it off before it rots. I'm just gonna set this down. Here's the other one. Super healthy looking roots. And this one only has uh, three leaves on it. Maybe a new one coming soon, um, but really nice looking roots. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Let me know how you care for your ficus taniki. Um, otherwise, thanks again for watching everyone. Take care, bye.